אוקיי, בסדר. Let's start, so today is, uh, we will learn uh, Hilchot Dior, today is class number three. Okay, so we start with Hafiz Chaim, uh, page uh, 62. 62, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Go ahead, we can read. Okay, so it would seem that there is nothing derogatory about a statement of taste. To say, I don't like dry wine is a description of the speaker's preferences and not a critical evaluation of the wine. Mm -hmm. Ostensibly, then, one should be allowed to say that he does not like the oratory style of a given lecturer. In fact, however, such statements are generally prohibited, for they imply that the speaker lacks effectiveness. So, basically, da -da 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 -da, uh, so you're just not allowed to even, you know, there's nothing direct to a statement to taste, say, I, okay, so if you say, I don't like something, Mm -hmm. Okay, but to say I don't like the way somebody says something, that's not yeah. good. Yes, so this, this is the, but that, that's the uh, rationale that the people use, right? If since this is allowed, maybe that is allowed. So if right. it's only my opinion, so you want to listen to this rabbi, you can listen to the rabbi. I'm just right. telling you, me personally, I don't like he speaks too fast, too slow, he, he does not know what he okay. what he's so What if you say I don't like the rabbi and that's it? That's uh, that's the problem. So maybe, like, maybe okay, so here they're saying, I, oh, I don't like the way he talks. Mm -hmm. Okay, fine. But if you just say, I just don't like this rabbi. That's uh, okay. So if you if you have some uh, some constructive purpose to say, for example, if it's uh, this uh, Friedman guy, for example, right, this clown. Mm -hmm. So that's a totally for constructive purpose. There are other rabbis, for example, I, I used to listen to different rabbis, but then I stopped. But uh, it's not that, the, for me, they're not effective. They are too, too many, like, too, too much of uh, right. things. But, so, but on, on one hand, one second. But on the other hand, that is, uh, this person had, uh, like, 50 people uh, live, watching his life. So, I mean, uh, I mean uh, not live, not watching, but in, in, uh, in, uh, in a room. So they, they like his style. And they've been there, going there for, uh, for years. So right. how can I say he's a, I just say I don't like his style. Like that's not. Uh, uh, but but what, you know how many you do not know how many people told me they do not like style of Rabbi Mizrahi or Rabbi Rubin because it's very uh, fresh. Sure, I'm sure that that so that's uh, not so, so, okay. But well, but it, it's exactly the same uh, the same reason. So they say it's very aggressive. It's not that you have to go slow and uh, all of this. Uh, useless things that, that uh, you are aware of, right? They, they, they said this, but, uh, but uh, they are the only effective rabbis. You, you understand? I agree, but so, can a person just not like him and say, I, I don't like him, I don't know why, I just don't like him. Like, there's nothing to shot. Yeah, I just don't like it. It's, 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 so, it's, it's Loshan Hara, it, it's uh, about other person. It's negative, so what is Loshan Hara? Definition of Loshan Hara is some derogatory information. So I don't like him. So, so in another word, he's saying that he doesn't like him. No, okay, okay. So, so listen. So all of us, or more, most of us, think that they are all, we are almost perfect. Almost, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. basically, when, when somebody, when I say, not I, when somebody says this, one of these perfect people say, I don't like somebody, meaning this, uh, this rabbi is not good. Because if he would be good, of course I would like him. Uh -huh. Okay, yeah. so maybe it gives yeah. off the impression to somebody yeah. else. But if I'm talking to somebody and say, I don't like that person, maybe it'll feed them and they won't like him either just because I said it. Exactly, right? 100%. So, like uh, some, uh, somebody you went, I mean, to, to, to a restaurant, right? Let's say they open you and somebody asks, how was it? And, and, and the, the, the person started and said, it's perfect, perfect like it's a straightforward Lashon Haram, where if he starts saying something negative. I have one taste, he has another taste, for him it was too spicy, and I, I cannot uh, live without spice. Yeah. You understand? For example, right? for, for me, if it's uh, uh, less than uh, one ounce of pepper, it's not a dish, for example, right? So, so, I mean, so, and, but he said it's not good. So whether we like it or not, so all of this uh, answer, whatever, whatever we, we hear from other people, like on, in the media, whatever, so it affects us. Okay, what if, what if you're listening to two rabbis, and you like both of them, yeah. and 
you're talking and you're just like, I like both of them a lot. Let's yeah. say it's Rabbi Mizrahi, Rabbi Aaron. And I say, but I like Rabbi Mizrahi better. It's not like I dislike, it's not saying anything about no, that. But, but that. It, 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 it implies, it, 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 it implies that, uh, so if you have a preference, if you have only like half an hour during the day, so you, you would uh, listen to the one that you, you like better. Uh -huh. that, that's exactly what it's saying. So to other person, for example, uh, person is, is looking up to you and you, you already spent so many hours listening to them. So for him, you're an expert, right? In, in, in some sense, right? So I mean, if, if somebody went uh, skiing, so he skied like uh, for the past 10 years, I never ski, for example. So I know he's not professional, but uh, I would ask him uh, whatever he said, this is a uh, mountain is good, this is not good, go here, go there, by this, by that. I mean, like he's an expert for me, right? And whatever he said, I would uh, would take it to the bank. That's a lot like it should, even though it's not. It's just his personal preference. Maybe he's a advanced guy. Maybe he's a, uh, he's a, uh, I don't know, not so advanced. I understand, I understand. So. By the way, if Rabbi Yaron sees this, uh, I don't like Rabbi Mizrahi better. I was just, it was an example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In case, it's one, it's one in case he listens, just, you know. Yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, that is <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, didn't, we didn't mean to insult anyone, of course. Okay. That's uh, that's not what our intention. We're not insulting. We're the Lord, but yeah, uh, right. the bottom line is we have to like uh, get onto our head not to speak negatively. Right. Okay. okay. So I think we're on uh, chapter one and uh, page two eighty uh, two fifty eight. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Number four. Okay. Go so ahead. You can let start. Me, what? You can start off. Yeah. 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 So let me read this number four and then we continue. With number Hold on, let me just get my... Okay. Okay. All right. All right, so, so number four, let, let me read the full halakha and then we go uh, like line by line. So it says a straight path. The, uh, this involves discovery, the midpoint temperament, and each and every trait that man possesses uh, within his personality. This refers to the trait, uh, trait which is equidistant from either, uh, from either of extremes without being close to either of them. So as we said before, right, the last time when we learned, so we, we're not talking about one specific trait, so we talk, we're talking about like all of the traits combined. So and this is uh, represent the path, all of the traits that that, that he has to adjust. And they have to, as you say, have to be equidistant, like in the middle, in the middle of this specific trait. And it, all, all of them would be the middle of the path. Okay. Therefore, the early stages instructed the man to evaluate his traits, <clears throat> to calculate them and direct them along the middle path. So that he will be of uh, be sound of body. Okay. For example, he should not uh, be wrathful, easily angered, nor be like uh, that without feeling. Rather, he should adopt an uh, intermediate course. Uh, there is he should uh, display anger only when the matter is serious enough uh, to to warrant it. Okay. So we will see the whole situation in order to prevent the matter from recurring. So it's a uh, it's famous example with, uh, with children, when you try to educate children, and, and uh, with the family members. Okay. So you, you, you display anger sometimes, right? But you, you're not angry inside, that's the point. So that they would know that something displeases you. And mm -hmm. you told them so many times to, to be careful with this law, with that law, okay. Similarly, he should uh, not desire Anything other than uh, than that which his body needs and cannot exist without, as the Proverbs thirteen twenty five states, the righteous man eats only to satisfy his soul. Okay. <clears throat> also, he should not labor in his business except to gain what he needs uh, for immediate use. So don't don't over uh, overwork. Right. As the Psalms uh, thirty seven sixteen states, a little is good for the righteous man. So when 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 one person trying to accumulate and accumulate and accumulate, so you know for sure he's not uh, most likely not for sure, but 
most likely like he's very materialistic and materialistic and righteous is not exactly going hand to hand, hand in hand. Uh, he should not be overly stingy, nor spread his money about, but he should give charity according to his capacity, of course, and lend the, the, the needy as the fitting, as, as is fitting. He should not be overly uh, elated and laugh excessively, nor be sad and depressed in spirit. Rather, he should be quietly, ha quietly happy at all times with a friendly countenance. The same applies with regard to the all other trades. This path is a path of wise. Every man um, whose trade is uh, intermediate and equally balanced uh, can be called a wise man. Okay, so <clears throat> there is a lot to learn from this uh, Mishnah, of course. So let's go to the beginning. <clears throat> and let, let me start uh, from the beginning and then we comment from uh, Number 39. Okay. The straight path. This involves discovering the midpoint temperament of each and every trait that the man possesses within his personality. This refers to the trait which is equidistant from either of the extremes without being close to either of them. Therefore, the early stages instructed a man to evaluate his traits. So as we said, like every every night, that's that's what we do. Uh, not, not traits, but uh, uh, like um, what would happen during the day, and of course you you, you understand you I did this and that wrong because because of this uh, bad trait. To calculate them <clears throat> and to direct them along the middle path, so that uh, he will be sound of body. Okay. <clears throat> For example, he should not be wrathful, easily angered, nor be like a dead without feeling. Rather, he should adopt the intermediate course. Okay, that's uh, I think it's self-explanatory but if you want to add something like uh, you're welcome just stop me wherever you want okay mm -hmm. there is a, he should uh, he should display anger only when um, the matter is serious enough to warrant it okay anger 39 the translation is based on chapter 2 halakha 3 okay also see commentary to the knesses hagidol okay no problem continue um next uh, commentary only when to all of I think we skipped a lot of commentary, you know? Uh, we did it last time. Oh, oh, we went, right, that's right, that's right. We said yeah. we were going to go, okay. All right, all right. Okay. Okay. Um, I mean, we did only half because we didn't have, well, like, the time was running out. Right, 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 right. Mm -hmm. okay. So number 40. I wrote a note. Serious enough to warrant it. 40. Mm -hmm. The Rambam appears to be referring to the two the, to matters which invoke, uh, invoke personal feelings. Okay. Nevertheless, the uh, Misrat Moshe interprets this passage as referring to the instance in which Torah, Torah law, requires to display anger. For example, Kalik transgression of the Torah law. So basically, <clears throat> so I have this uh, one of uh, my Talmudim, right? So he said that uh, he was went to show this was a boy, like all over the Mitzvah, of course. So he was. Uh, Put into feeling uh, while seated, <laughs> and, uh, and he rebuked him. I said maybe he was Sephardi. He said no, no, he was Ashkenazi. He is Ashkenazi. And uh, this boy said, I just don't do not care. Okay, you do. You think am I going to do what I think is right? You know. So and uh, and that, that's what he did. I mean, he he learned uh, without me. He, he learned with somebody else this thing. Okay, so he he showed like he's not. He's not happy with him. So even though the, the, the guy is not, he didn't change. He was uh, doing it while sitting. But uh, this uh, this guy showed like uh, this almost angry face. Okay, that's how he told me this story. Okay, continue. In order to prevent the matter from uh, recurring, so you you show them that you 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 do not agree with the uh, with their behavior. So. You show that you're angry, even though you, you're not angry with them, we're angry with the thing that they do, but uh, people uh, remember the faces. Okay. Similarly, he should not desire anything uh, other than which the body needs. Okay. Desire for the one. This refers to physical desire. Like um, 
what is the physical design, everything that uh, um, that you can think of. So if you need exercise, whatever your body need to exercise, you need to walk. Then you need to walk. You need uh, to run a little. Run a little. You need to, to ride a bike. That, that's what you need. But don't do like a sport, professional sports, right? Uh, like, I don't know, run a marathon or something. That's a waste of life. Okay. Or be karate karate guy or a boxer or a wrestler. So that's uh, th that's not for a health reason. That's uh, overdoing. And same is eating. I mean, they eat normal. Eat the, You want to eat organic because it's not healthy. Some other things are not healthy. Okay, you eat organic, but don't go like uh, crazy with that also. Continue. So, second, second. Uh, one more time, the sentence from the beginning. Similarly, he should not desire anything other than that which the body needs and cannot exist without, as a proverb states. Um, the righteous man eats to satisfy his soul. Okay, 42. Uh, the Rambam quotes uh, supporting verses only uh, two of intermediate trade. Perhaps because his uh, description of middle, uh, middle of the road position of the trades might appear to veer toward the extreme. So that's why he needs uh, this um, uh, with, uh, with eating, for example, right? Uh, uh, so we would think that um, uh, that extreme would be in this case, like uh, that when the guy is overeating or that the guy is uh, uh, on a diet. Mm -hmm. right. So so they say no, he, he should eat minimum so to to, to, to satisfy his soul. So basically, to to eat uh, uh, to 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 be satiated, you can eat bread. Basically, you eat the vegetables and bread, a little soup, so you, you, you study it. You don't need uh, to eat uh, all the fancy, schmancy meal. Yeah, you understand? Right. So, okay, so, so he, he said that uh, this is not so, 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 so simple to, for us to figure out in ourselves what is the middle path. That's why he gives this example. Right. We, uh, we, might, uh, we might expect the intermediate path between gluttony, right, overeating, and the opposite extreme to be eaten uh, to, to one satisfaction. Right? However, um, here we are told that we should desire only what is sufficient in order to exist. So all of this, uh, as our rabbis teach us, so, uh, the, the most important foods is bread and water. That's the most important. And uh, they are in abundance and uh, they're cheap, relatively. They were always cheaper. But all of these foods, fancy schmancy food, so the, the, the more expensive it is, the more useless for you it is. That's uh, they say the, the formula. And, um, unless you need uh, for, for medicinal reason, right? Um, I don't know, some, for blood, uh, to improve blood or whatever. But otherwise, it's a waste of money. However, Rambam is not telling us to deny ourselves such, uh, satisfaction. So you, you have to be it's, uh, you have to be satisfied. I mean, uh, otherwise, if you all of us hungry, it's also not good. As Dvarin uh, eight ten teaches, you shall eat and be sati uh, satisfied, and bless uh, Hashem your Lord. Okay, that's from the Chaz Amazon. Blessed um, uh, based on on that verse in Brachas forty eight b, explain that we are obligated to recite grace only in Brachas Amazon. Only when we uh, we feel physically satisfied. Okay, the Rambam quotes this concept in Hilchas Brachas one one. Okay. Uh -huh. In chapter three, so so basically, so before we continue, so biblically, biblically, if you uh, uh, if you uh, ate bread more, more than one kazai, so Rabbi uh, Vadi say uh, uh, I think uh, double kazai is. Uh, Kibetza, so if you ate uh, that amount, so you you must uh, and you you are satisfied. Like you you're not hungry. Let's say you have that that much bread, and plus you have the salad and soup and fish and all other things. So you 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 should bench. But if you ate only like half a sandwich, and uh, let's say it's kizai, well, let's say let's say right, mm -hmm. and uh, and you you're not satisfied. So it's a rabbinical. It's us, so we accept it on upon ourselves to. To bench even in that case. Okay. So the the uh, 
so it, it, it comes into play when uh, when person uh, forgot whether he's benched or not. So if it's rabbinical, so we say don't don't do it. But if it's biblical, so they say do it. Okay. So um, so meaning if if you are satiated or not, that's that's the thing. Okay. In chapter three, Halacha one, in Shmonet Perakim, chapter four, he elaborates on the negative aspect of this uh, ascetism. Right? Meaning when he does not eat. This is that. That's what uh, these uh, Christians do. I'm, I'm not sure if they don't eat in this. All these monks or eat. I'm not sure what they do there. But uh, I think that that's uh, for them. In order to be holy, you have to fast. You have to you know, break your body. You have to do that. That's not Jewish way. Thus, uh, his intent cannot be uh, that uh, the, that we deny our desires, but rather that uh, we school ourselves to desire and feel satisfied. With what we need, without excess. So we try, but it's it's very deep line. Let's read it again. Thus, uh, his intent cannot be that we deny our desire. So it's not like you have to start uh, start yourself. No, but rather that we school ourselves to desire and feel satisfied with what we need, uh, without excess. So I eat whatever I eat. I eat cereal in the morning, and uh, I I am I'm, uh, I'm sorry. I satisfy with that. Okay, I am full, and I don't need any like uh, fancy schmancy breakfast. Okay, mm. this is the this is the dominant theme. This is the dominant theme in a section of a diet in chapter four. Okay. okay, let me ask you something here. Maybe you know this because this just hit me, and I didn't have this yeah. question okay. yeah. until now. It says, "You shall eat and be satisfied, and bless Hashem your Lord." Right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So that refers to Berkat Amazon, right? No, I mean it's it is a it is a verse from the Torah, but it's a, it's a verse from Berkat Amazon, and that on that verse that Berkat Amazon is based. Yes, it's a right. verse. Yes, yes, okay. So, but what does that mean? Like, let's say you don't eat bread, but you still feel satisfied after a meal. What do you do? You do nef, nef, the nefashos, that one, the other what one. The nefashos? Uh, no, 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 it's 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 only about uh, bread that they say that. But how does it? How do they get it? Right, like where? Because it doesn't say when you eat and be satisfied from bread. It just oh yeah, 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 exactly. Because okay. okay. if you're that's satisfied, you can be satisfied with not just bread. Exactly, exactly. That's a good question. So basically, when um, all the time, when uh, all the time, or most of the time, when when we say meal, it means bread. Okay. Eat, because it was a staple food of the of everybody. Like all all all, all people had bread. Right. People were so poor. Like uh, like today in America, we bread like, was like the main uh, meal back then, right? Yeah, like it, yeah, everybody yeah. always had bread. Yes. That was like the thing that so. That's yeah, it. Okay. That's it. Makes so, sense. so people so people were, when they would go travel, they would take sack of flour or a flour right. whatever they need to make bread. That's it. Water you can get the water from the well. You mix with the uh, flour and. Uh, Bake, uh, I don't know, like um, like like a mat, something like a matzah, right. a fire. So that's uh, that's the staple meal. But uh, just uh, just to address whatever you said, I keep forgetting that you know they based their laws based on when they were living and then just care. Yes, yes, right. yeah, yeah. But uh, but but no, but, but it still applies. To, so so the, the only difference, like to today, um, uh, if so, if if somebody ate it kizais of the food. Like uh, one, one hour, wherever you ate apple, like wherever you ate, right? So, so you have to say, uh, uh, for sure. how long do you have? So, if you were not satiated, so they have like half an hour. Mo yeah. Most likely, most likely that, that you will be, you'll be hungry, most likely, obviously, it's half an hour. So, oh. that's why we're trying to, to say as soon as possible, okay, right. So, but, well, but if I have some like uh, egg omelet, just yeah. omelet. Yes, yeah, yeah. Nef uh, that goes with that blessing too. Ne nefashos, right? Why, and why, why, what's that? Why, why? It goes? No, you, you, you ate a lot. You, when you ate the whole omelet, uh, I don't know, a few eggs. I mean, that it's for sure it's you, you ate amount. So, we, we go by amount. How much amount? So, just amount that's the reflection, right? Yeah, okay. minimum, minimum. Yes, amount, uh, yeah, that's okay. uh, the difference. All right, makes sense. All right, I'm good. Yeah. 
Okay, so let's see. I think we are there. Um, this is so the, the last sentence of this commentary. This is the, the dominant theme in uh, in this section of diet, chapter four. Actually, we said okay, and those describing the conduct of the Torah sage, chapter five. Okay, we're going to get to it. So it is commentary number um, forty-two, and this uh, said further: the righteous man eats and to uh, to satisfy his soul. Forty-three. The verse continues, <clears throat> but the belly of the wicked will want. So all of these uh, wicked people always hungry, always hungry. They drive them crazy. What do I want to eat? Do I want to eat? Always hungry, right? The commentary is note that uh, the, the contrast between the two does not center on the quality of food they eat. Does not, one more time. Uh, the, the, the commentary is note that the contrast between the two does not center on the quantity of the food they eat. So it does not matter how much he eats, right? But on the attitude with which they eat. Interesting, right? It's about attitude, not about quantity of the food. Because like the that, reason they're eating, like are they eating? I mean, I know it's metaphorically; it's not directly talking about just food, but it's also like uh, they're eating, like oh yeah, yeah, like I just want because I can buy it, right? Like, to, like that's the that's the attitude, right? Like oh yeah, this, this is mine, like uh, it's mine, like uh, you know, like they just like they just have a poor attitude. It's not because they're just constantly hungry like they you know they're they're, they're right. like they just eat a lot like yes. that's okay and there's a lot of people who can eat a lot but they, you know it's not because they can they're just hungry so they eat a lot yes. right so yes yeah and and righteous person would eat because he he must eat he, he must need this energy right he's tired I, I mean i i need to eat otherwise i cannot study i cannot uh go forth that, that, right. that that's why i eat so that's uh that's uh this guy eat and a, a, that guy ate. But for this, it's a big mitzvah. So right. every bite, whatever he takes, is a big mitzvah. I'm doing it for the sake of the Torah Lord. I'm right. doing it for, for the sake of the mitzvah because I, I am having my breakfast. I need to go to work. I need to perform. I need to, 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 to behave like, like a Jew and project it to the world. And I need to eat this breakfast. So basically, this. Uh, um, uh, one second, one second. I'm going to go to the office today. Okay. Oh, yeah? Oh, okay. All right. All right. No, it's okay. I just want to... Okay, sorry. Okay, okay. the same here? Okay. All right, for sure. So... Um, so, basically, for, for, a, for a righteous person, it, it is made five. It's everybody. Okay. Continue because the righteous are not given over to pursuit of the um, gratification, as you said, right? They uh, they can be satisfied. So the, it's not about what the statement I ate this. I uh, like I remember in the office, like they uh, they start ordering and who is going to order like pay uh, twenty dollars or twenty five dollars for the sandwich many years ago, you know? Mm. So it's a I don't know. Um, conversely, it is it is a gluten of the wicked, which actually causes uh, their want. So they, uh, they they cannot be, they, they cannot satisfy. So the blessing is uh, the Hashem said, and you will eat and you will be satiated. So right. and, and uh, our uh, commentaries say, what does it mean? That you eat a little, and you would be feel uh, full. That that's the blessing. So when you eat a little and feel full, that's the blessing. Not uh, not all the, the midrashic interpretation of this verse. Okay, it says the righteous. This refers to Eliezer, who said to uh, to Rivka, "Let me sip a little water." Right? He said, "Let me sip a little water mm -hmm. from um, Bereshis uh, twenty-four seventeen. A, a, a single sip. Me as a little sip. So I mean a single sip. That's what righteous how they drink." This um, and and the belly of the wicked will want. This is refers to Asa, right? <laughs> Who said to Yaakov, "Stuff me," right? When when he sold his um, firstborn right, right? Right. Stuff me. Pour. It says uh, clearly, pour, pour into my my throat. So I'm going. Uh, it says that he was uh, 
it was tight. I am going to all open my mouth and you just pour it down. Right, the, right. This, uh, he didn't even say thank you. Uh, I mean, he 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 did uh, better than thank you. He sold the, his uh, birthright. So, yeah. Right. Uh, Rabbi Yitzchak ben Zera said, he opened his mouth uh, agape, like a camel, and said, I will uh, open my mouth, and you shall pour it, it in. Okay. As you said, right? Medish Tanhuma, Pinchas 13, Pamid Baraba 21, 18. Okay. So continue. Can finish so on, on this page. Mm -hmm. Also, he shall not labor in business except to gain what uh, to gain what he needs for immediate use. As the Psalms 37:16 state, "A little is good for the righteous man." Okay. So what does it mean? So we just just like uh, just uh, superficially, we we'll look at this this uh, uh, sentence. You can understand. So I have uh, like. Um, Sometimes, like some time ago, now I don't do, but uh, some time ago I was looking uh, at the job description, right? And they, they say, we need a person with this, this skill and that, and he has to know a little this and that. So, so basically just looking at the job description, you see that they need a slave. That's what they need. Somebody is a slave who's going right. to work, uh, I don't know, seven days a week, 24 hours. That, that, that's what they, all, all they need. So a person who puts himself like, uh, he knows that's what they want. And who agrees to this? So he 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 he's under this category, right? So I mean, he, he works a lot. Commentary number forty-four. Uh, as it was states, so, um, here again, Rambam quotes biblical verse because the definition of the intermediate path may seem extreme. Okay, so I mean, uh, it just may make the money for today. Mm -hmm. The verse uh, also clarifies that Rambam is not uh, denigrating the idea of work. It's up, but he, he was pro work uh, always, but rather excessive preoccupation in one's uh, profession um, as a means to, or to acquire possession. So people will want stuff, right? Uh, and then they work more. Why? Because they want to acquire more stuff. That's the problem. Uh, it is highly unlikely that the Rambam would criticize the work per se. So I mean, he was pro work. He always say a per person has to work, and he said. Rabbis cannot accept salary and stuff like that. Uh, uh, not a proverb 6.6, 6, uh, but it says sluggard, go to the end, see its ways, and become wise. Okay, so as, um, as we know, the uh, end is a very hardworking uh, creature, right? Mm -hmm. I think it says in the first day it collects enough, enough food until the end of his life. That he and he continued working, and Rabbi Ruben once said, uh, maybe he said more than once, but I heard it once. Very interesting, like different twist about this animal guy, uh, this end guy. So it says, uh, so um, go, go and uh, go, um, slugger, go, go to the end and see the way uh, and become wise. So what, what does it mean? So go and ask this end. Why are you working so much, right? You 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 know that uh, that that you're not going to live more more than uh, six months. You're going to die, so you you don't need more food. Why are you working so hard? And the end would say, uh, maybe Hashem is going to be merciful with me, and He is going to extend your life, my my life, more than past the six months. So and it says here, be, become wise. What does it mean? So this person, or I don't know who. Shlomo Hamelech, well, I don't remember how he explained it, he said, come on, Hashem is going to extend your life and he's not, he's not, not going to, to give you food. You understand? Mm. It's, simply, it's simply ridiculous. cannot be. So, and that, that's what I said uh, recently to one person to, uh, for whom Hashem did many miracles. And at the one point, he started like, uh, he, he started, like uh, had some doubts. I said, it, you know, I, I, thought, I said to that person, think, think by, by yourself, like Hashem did all of this miracle just to dump you in the middle of the road, that that's what he did? What kind of a vicious God he is? What, you, what, what, what do you think uh, that he is? I mean, if he did the miracle, they take you out, he's going to continue. Like, why, why, why you doubt him? Okay. So that, that's actually how, that's, uh, that's a little speech actually how, Baruch Hashem. Continue. 
So it says in Brachas uh, 8a, he who enjoys the toil of his hand is greater than one who fears God. Very strong statement. One more time. He who, enjo uh, who, uh, he who enjoys the toil of his hand is greater than one who fears God. Okay. And you now when person works and makes money, okay. As it is stated, if you eat of your work, uh, eat of the work of your hand, you are fortunate and um, will possess good. Right? If you if you work and eat the, the, the work of your hands, you are fortunate and you will possess good. Okay, so Psalms 128. Too. Okay, you are fortunate in this life, and you and will possess good in the world to come. Okay, continue. The Rambam himself quotes uh, the latter passage in Hil Hastal Mutora 311. Uh, thus, the Rambam is not criticizing a person for working hard, but rather teaching us that work uh, and us that work and its profit should not be uh, our greatest priorities. So, of course, you need to work, you need to support your family, you need to feed your children, you need to 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 pay your uh, rent and uh, I know your bills or whatever for your car, whatever that that's that's uh, that's normal. Uh, but don't do like overdo. Like extra hours. Mm -hmm. like, okay, Baruch Hashem, I was so lucky when, when I was working in office. So, uh, so every Shabbos they had test. Every when, when every Shabbos for the past they started maybe seven years, and Baruch Hashem. So I had the, all the Chinese and Indians and my team, and they wanted more money, and they they pay uh, they pay like double or whatever like. like Crazy amount, like when it started seven years, ten years ago. So they paid like I don't know for a few hours, like two hundred and fifty dollars. I think it's a lot of money, right? And uh, and I said, yeah, 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 you you take it, you take it. And then and, and people they were so hungry for money, they would they took it. And what happened? Exact. And I told them because of the religious reasons stuff like that. So and what happened later? What later on? So company said, no, no, but you cannot pay you anymore. anymore. Like company is not doing good. So no overtime pay for Saturday. You mm -hmm. just come to work, and whoever did not work, so we're not, we're not making him work. You understand? So when, when people are hungry, so it's not always bad for, for you when other people are hungry. Let, let them work. So basically, that's uh, my personal experience. So so uh, going going back, after note 44, it says, A little good uh, for the righteous man, 45. The verse uh, in its entirety expresses a contrast. Little is better for the righteous man than a greater wealth uh, that may that many of the wicked possess. It's very interesting. So whatever this righteous man has, so in other words, so he's very satisfied. So he said to, said to himself, that's what Hashem wants me to do. He wants me to, this, to be in this situation and serve him in this situation. That's it. That's, I mean, uh, Straightforward. Okay, that's what I'm going to do. So he's very satisfied. Other guy who has a lot, great wealth, so he, he thinks that somebody is richer than me. He, he, somebody is rather than me. Okay, never satisfied. Not the commentary of Ibn Ezra, the righteous man will be happier with, uh, with his small lot than the wicked with their great wealth. Okay, okay continue after 45. He should not be overly stingy, Okay, let's see number 46. Mm -hmm. The printed edition of Mishnah Torah. Okay, so close, uh, close his hand. Right. However, most manuscripts uh, use the term garden. With close of the hand, recall, uh, recall the body. Okay, so it's like commentary. Do not close your hand from your needy brothers. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's uh, that, that's uh, when they talk about Sudan. So asking. Somebody so like have your hand open and uh, give them something. Thus contrasted the extreme would be free handedness. It's like close hand and free handedness, right? Which is, makes sense. So this is uh, the first uh, miserly behavior, the opposite of which um, being a uh, uh, spendthrift. Miserly, okay. The valiant text um, might reflect difference uh, of opinion. As to which um, opposite extreme Rambam had in mind. Okay. But uh, that's straightforward. Somebody's stingy, somebody's uh, 
is uh, is uh, not it's like freehanded. It's also not good. Um, he should not be or worldly stingy nor spread his money about. Okay, but should uh, give charity according to to his capacity. Okay. For seven uh, in Hilchas Arachin, uh, which places uh, restriction uh, on uh, extreme one's generosity. So we said uh, it's, uh, I think it's, it's uh, like 20% tops, unless you're very rich, so you can give more, but uh, no more than 20%. Because the sage said, so now we, we, we collected tzedakah for all uh, these poor people. Now you want to also become poor and also be on our list? No, thank you. Just stay wherever you are, right? Just stay normal. Don't give more. And continue after number 47. And lend to the needy as a fitting. Okay, don't be stingy, lend to the need as a fitting commentary. Lending is also a form of charity. I mean, you, you help a person, the person is trying, I don't know, he's trying to move to a new apartment uh, because it's closer to his work and stuff like that. So he, he borrowed money from you for you, I don't know, for three months' rent, let's say. Okay, so just, uh, I mean, because of this new job and stuff like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, in Hilchas Matnot Aniyanim, so it's uh, uh, it's uh, laws of the poor. Right? The Rambam lists eight degrees of degrees of charity. The highest is to poor the fellow Jew who has become poor by giving him loans uh, or the like. So meaning that uh, you give him a loan, so so he can uh, he, you can make him he can make himself self sufficient. Mm -hmm. So he got a job, but he needs uh, to move to closer uh, to the to his office or to, to his place where where he works. I, I remember we had people in office. The guy was traveling three hours every day, each week, each way, three hours. It's unbelievable. Unbelievable. I, I I'm I'm not sure why he didn't move. Maybe he he saw that it's on the temporary stuff like that. But I don't know. Three hours. So it's it's crazy. So it's. Uh, when a person does not make enough money, so it's a mm -hmm. to, to lend them so he can be self-sufficient, okay? Continue. Um, uh, so, okay, so let, let's read the sentence from the beginning because too many commentaries. He should not be overly stringy, not spread his money about, but he should give charity accordingly to his capacity and lend to the needy as, as is fitting. 48. Okay, we said that, sorry. Okay, after 48. Be sure he should not be overly uh, elated and laugh exceedingly. 49. Such an expression of happiness, ex expressive happiness, is often sound of inner discontent and suffering. So I can testify to that. So all these people who laugh like, uh, uh, like very loud and stuff, they, they're not only obnoxious, but uh, they are uh, inside. They suffering. Some something is def definitely wrong. They be trying mm -hmm. to fight, and they try too hard, like it's in everybody's face. So once uh, one more time, the sentence from the beginning: He should not be overly elated um, and laugh uh, excessively, not be sad and depressed in spirit. Mm -hmm. Rather, he should be quiet, uh, quietly happy at all times, with a friendly countenance. Okay, quiet, happy at all times. Fifty. Um, his joy should be composed, sense of satisfaction. Okay. In this context, see Rama conclusion to the note on Shulchan Aruch, or Achaim, 697.1, in which he quotes Proverbs 15.15. A good-hearted person is always celebrated. But celebrate is not like he's uh, like, uh, crazy, celebrate, just uh, always happy. That Hashem made me a Jew, that's enough reason to be happy. Continue after 51. The same applies with regard to all other traits. 52. The Shmona Prakim, chapter 4, the Rambam mentions only other uh, intermediate traits. Among them, courage is the midpoint between arrogance and fear. It's very interesting. Um, so I didn't know that like, arrogance and fear, they, okay. Arrogance and fear. Mm -hmm. um, interesting, right? Humility is an uh, intermediate uh, intermediate between the pride and meekness. Okay, so meekness like he's a dork and like he's uh, afraid of everybody. Like uh, that's that's a little too much. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, earnestness, uh, earnestness, sorry, earnestness 
is intermediate between Bostian and lowliness. Okay. Patience is intermediate between rashness and insensitivity. Okay. Mm -hmm. Should make sense. Any comments? You want any, any comments on this what we just read? Not at the moment, because I I got I gotta review it and then probably next week I'll have more comments. <laughs> okay, so okay, let's finish up. So this uh, this path uh, is a path of wise comment. Eh? There is those uh, um, those whose behavior is controlled by their intellect. That's what we call wise. Mm -hmm. um, so meaning when he can control his emotions. So right. you know, the, well, what is going to mean control control his emotion? It means that uh, he knows whatever the situation what ha is happening to me now. It's a test from Hashem. That's it. That no more, no less. I'm on a test. And all of the cameras uh, uh, on me, and I'm in the spot. Okay, that's that's how he can control his emotions. Every man who trades are uh, intermediate and uh, equally balanced uh, uh, is called a wise man. Okay, last comment. Not the contrast uh, to the pious of the following halacha. Okay, um, though the published edition of the Mishnah Torah includes this line as a final. Uh, concept of our halacha, many of authoritative, uh, authoritative manuscripts place in the beginning of halacha five. Okay, I mean, for us it's uh, good either way. So stop here. Okay. Or you want to continue? One second, one second. No, let's let's stop because huh? this one was long. But I want to review it and then for next week I, I'm gonna I might have some commentary that maybe we'll show. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think but no, I like this pair I like this this parak. I just I want to review it because mm -hmm. it's a lot to grasp on this one. Okay. So please do and please please prepare like if you want, let, let's let's start next class with with your summary. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So let's yeah, make make, make yourself notes and uh Let's let's review absolutely. I think it's a good idea. Okay, perfect. Okay. All right, thank you very much. So right. All right. next time. Thank mm -hmm. you. Bye bye. You know when you have a dream and you see a pretty woman? You've had that? Now you never actually see an ugly woman in dreams. It's always a pretty woman. And by the way, it's always the same woman for all of us. have a dream of the same exact woman. And she's more dangerous than the Satan himself. You're not even allowed to say her name. What are you going to call her for? It functions very much like drugs. People are addicted to it. I tried to quit dozens of times, hundreds of times. My fantasies and stuff, they're not mine anymore. Cabinet ministers, judges, diplomats, even one of the country's top spies. These 
men are accused of some of the most sadistic child sexual abuse imaginable on hundreds of victims. It shouldn't take over your whole life. If you satiate it, you're never going to have enough. If you starve it and only feed it when it's permissible, according to the Torah, you're always going to be happy. <laughs>